So we have heard about how we can make the transformation to electric mobility and renewable energies, but just how expensive will it be? How can we make that shift without crippling economies that rely on the combustion engine, for example? Well, we have the privilege to get the insight on that question from one of the most renowned economists in Germany. Professor Dr. Andreas Luschel has just been named the Chair of Environmental Resource Economics and Sustainability at the Ruhr University in Bochum. There is nobody better to give us an economic perspective on electrification and climate neutrality. Andreas? Yeah, thanks a lot for having me and talking about uh, electrification and climate neutrality um, and uh, the economic perspective, which means uh, what is the regulatory frame um, in order to make these changes happening and to achieve our targets um, uh, in terms of uh, long-term climate neutrality. Um, I'm going to rely in my presentation uh, on material that's available. Um, uh, we are um, um, conducting an annual monitoring process of the German energy transition. Um, and of course, uh, these different uh, climate targets and uh, the role of um, economic instruments uh, to achieve them is key in this uh, annual monitoring. So uh, you can find more information on the status and the progress uh, of the uh, energy transition in Germany in these uh, reports uh, for the German government. Um, the um, general situation in Germany um, here is, uh, as in many other countries, um, in, um, progressing rapidly. So uh, climate targets have been ratcheted, um, um, and um, you, uh, we have seen an, uh, an, an um, even um, here a target on climate neutrality moved forward to 2045 uh, by the, the German government. And that's, um, of course, in line with the um, goals that have been set uh, now by many other countries, uh, the US, Japan, uh, South Korea, um, uh, China, uh, 2060 climate neutrality. And um, in, in our case, um, the specificity which makes it very interesting is that um, there, is not, there are not only targets um, for achieving climate neutrality or for reducing emissions um, in the upcoming decades, but we have as well sectoral targets. So we, we uh, directly set uh, targets for different sectors, including the transport sector. And here uh, you can see how these targets have been uh, registered um, in this year. Um, so the transport sector, which originally in Germany had around 160 million ton of CO2 equivalent, um, is now asked um, uh, to reduce substantially its emissions. Currently, it's about 150. Um, there is um, uh, this, uh, this number from 2020 uh, includes quite a, a substantial fraction uh, of uh, reductions coming from the uh, COVID crisis and the uh, changes that we've been seeing in uh, 2020. Um, uh, but um, uh, um, from there, we still have to uh, reduce um, uh, almost uh, 60 million tons, um, which is more than 45% in only 10 years. And the question, of course, is how how can we do that uh, and what are the, the main ingredients and um, the main ingredients? Um, this is electric mobility, uh, in the German case, around 14 million um, uh, electric vehicles. Um, this uh, is uh, more public transportation uh, and, of course, as well, uh, uh, more um, uh, uh, train traffic, um, bike and um, pedestrians. Uh, so um, we have to um, really change substantially the transport sector. And uh, that, is, <clears throat> uh, that is going to be very difficult because we see that the absolute volumes of traffic, they have been increasing in the motor split um, has been um, almost constant. So um, it's, it's uh, remained largely constant, which means that uh, only um, technology or supply side measures are not sufficient um, to reduce uh, substantially our uh, final energy consumption or our greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we need uh, incentivize more. Uh, we need um, to initiate behavioral changes among individuals and as well uh, among companies. And that's um, 
uh, demanding because uh, we know that we are progressing only quite slowly. I will show you this uh, in a second. Um, and um, we need time uh, for technologies to develop um, and uh, existing technologies stay uh, for a long time in the market. Um, and uh, what's, of course, especially important is the um, need for infrastructure um, that has to be developed and, and as well uh, takes time um, um, to uh, be uh, build out, um, including, of course, then as well the uh, sticking of behavioral patterns in part of transport use. So all this um, uh, makes it so um, difficult to um, um, initialize uh, the um, uh, electric car market and as well um, to stabilize the market rent up, uh, the acceptance uh, by the customers, but um, I think we can um, uh, we can tackle this challenge by a combination of different approaches. And uh, what do we need for that? Well, first we need um, renewable electricity. Um, so if we think about carbon neutrality, um, we uh, can uh, learn from uh, our example that um, um, uh, greening the electricity generation is relatively simple. In Germany, the uh, share of renewables uh, has um, increased continuously over the last two decades uh, and now almost um, uh, makes up 50% of electricity production. Uh, so the, um, elect the uh, greening of the electricity sector works well and we have to electrify as well uh, to a much larger extent the other sectors. And that's not only true for transportation, but that's as well true for the building sector. Um, so electrification is an, uh, an, an, a key um, measure to achieve our climate targets. But for that, we need renewables built out. And uh, here I show you that uh, the, uh, the uh, targets for the increases in renewables to really electrify our energy system are substantial. We need substantially more um, renewables built out. Um, the numbers compared to um, the developments in the past, which I said um, in, in Germany uh, have been already quite um, uh, large, have to be tripled or quadrupled uh, in order to really allow for these um, large numbers of green electricity that um, has to be generated to fuel um, our new um, carbon neutral um, energy system uh, and to electrify especially industry um, uh, but as well buildings and transportation. And here we see a lot of obstacles, um, again infrastructure obstacles, uh, it's difficult to build out um, the um, uh, electri electricity infrastructure, um, but we see as well resistance by um, individuals, uh, for example, against um, uh, windmills onshore, um, um, as well starting against a large-scale photovoltaic in Germany. Um, so this is all going to challenge the transition also in the transport sector. Um, the uh, uh, instrument mix you know, um, that helps to keep the uh, costs of this transition low um, is uh, built uh, an economic perspective uh, on um, mainly a set of tools, including carbon pricing, infrastructure development, and R&D support. And here I, um, I um, show you the ideas about carbon pricing that we are discussing uh, at the moment in Germany. Um, so uh, I show you a slide that is um, actually giving information about mitigation costs in different sectors. And on the left-hand side, you see the cheap options. On the right-hand side, you see the expensive options. And if you look at the sector where these options happen, you can see that the current emissions trading system in Europe is incentivized a large share of efficient mitigation options. Um, in energy, in industry, some part as well in building, uh, but for the transport sector, these options are very costly um, and are not basically or are difficult to incentivize with an emissions trading system. And so, therefore, um, in this economic perspective, uh, you need uh, more than just emissions trading, you need R&D support, you have to bring down the costs 
uh, of these mitigation options. You have to provide the relevant infrastructure. Um, uh, you have to invest in public transportation um, in order to enable people to switch uh, to um, uh, other modes of transportation uh, in order to bring down these high costs of mitigation in the transportation sector. Uh, otherwise, the um, CO2 pricing is not going to be effective. And as I said, this is the, the um, instrument that um, economists are favoring most. And you can see that uh, also policymakers are following to some extent this advice. So we are, uh, in, we have in Germany initiated a second emissions trading system that is covering the transport and uh, heat fuels, um, so petrol, diesel, heating oil, natural gas, and so forth, are now as well covered outside the traditional uh, emissions trading system in Germany. Um, and uh, here, these um, uh, fuels are getting uh, a fixed price um, related to their CO2 content. Um, so, and here I show you the different phases of our discussions on the ETS, on this new ETS crisis, the National Emissions Trading System. Uh, now the regulation is the dark blue, 145 to 65 euro in the upcoming years. Um, but obviously this will not be enough to trigger these changes, as I have shown you before. Um, so what we need is we need um, higher carbon prices, the cost of transition, and we need these additional uh, policy instruments. Um, this is in principle possible um, because um, uh, we have done calculation that showed that even with high carbon prices, uh, transport specific expenditures um, are increasing um, uh, moderately for most of the um, individuals and for the individuals that um, have very high uh, costs um, uh, of transportation, there are possibilities uh, to compensate these additional costs by a clever use um, of the revenues from carbon pricing. So uh, this is, I think, uh, one of the key um, uh, policy uh, challenges to uh, uh, rebalance uh, the um, energy pricing systems, make carbon expensive, um, and on the other hand, um, uh, use these um, incomes uh, to uh, address specifically distribution concerns. And in the transport sector, these distribution concerns, um, of course, are there. Um, uh, or computers, uh, not only in Germany, but as well in other um, countries, like, for example, Poland. Um, it's possible, uh, but there need to be a political will. And we made a proposal to not do this in terms of a lump sum uh, redistribution of these revenues, but use this money to uh, in, indeed uh, make electricity cheaper. Uh, because what happens with cheap electricity is that this um, electricity uh, electrification of these other sectors is much more easy and so therefore this energy price reform um, um, asking for higher carbon prices but giving that back um, to consumers to firms via lower electricity prices um, uh, also helps uh, the sector coupling uh, in our energy systems of course um, uh, there are as well other um, um, uh, measures discussed behind, besides this emission trading. Uh, I think the emissions trading system in Europe uh, that is going to be uh, installed um, by 2025 or 2026 um, following the Fit for 55 is uh, indeed uh, a very exciting development. But of course, we have as the core instrument emission standards um, in, uh, in, the, in the European dimension. Uh, in Germany, we as well discuss about uh, national legal tax systems that are based um, on and they are based on uh, CO2 content uh, to um, accelerate this transition, uh, achieving these 14 million um, uh, cars um, that uh, we have seen uh, in achieving uh, our <clears throat> transport-related goal. But of course, it needs more. Um, we have to as well think about how we avoid um, traffic uh, and how we incentivize this modal shift. And again, 
is um, driving behavior, uh, driving demand. Um, this is a core um, benefit of carbon pricing because many of the um, instruments that are targeting emission standards in the core, they are making transportation cheaper uh, and uh, induce more um, 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 transport behavior, um, the carbon price works differently, it's actually um, diminishing um, uh, the uh, mobility, the traffic, it's avoiding traffic, and it's shifting um, uh, the uh, modal split. So therefore, um, this is a, a sensible a way as well to uh, think about abatement options in road transportation. And as I said, we need this quickly because the um, the, um, the time it takes not to change passenger car fleet um, is uh, going to be uh, substantial. I show you here uh, a graph from our latest publication, um, which um, shows that even if we have um, fifty percent of the uh, of new cars being electric, um, that is the um, uh, light red. Uh, bar, uh, even then uh, the share um, of uh, electric people uh, in the German car fleet um, will only uh, uh, be 50% uh, by 2030. Um, so um, it's, uh, um, it's, it's, it's really a, a challenging task um, um, to, um, to do this. And um, as I said, the public acceptance is so important and we see that uh, this is very closely related um, to expansion of charging infrastructure. Just to give you a number here, um, there are some um, calculations that show that um, we have to increase the uh, publicly available charging stations by a number of 10 um, in order to really have uh, an attractive a charging infrastructure in Germany and allow for this long-term attractiveness uh, of electric vehicles, which is so important um, um, uh, to ramp up uh, this market without subsidies in the long run. Um, so uh, these are um, challenges, and it's clear that uh, this is um, the main challenge uh, for uh, the passenger, for, for, for the passenger fleet, for like cars, um, uh, because here uh, there is uh, a clear advantage um, of uh, electrification um, uh, over e fuels. And a slide that is uh, trying to show where uh, hydrogen uh, and e fuels um, find the place. Uh, in the uh, um, different sectors. And um, this is important to keep in mind because uh, we have as well built up hydrogen strategies as we have, as many countries have done in the past, uh, that um, are important uh, for transportation. Uh, if you think about bus and trains, heavy uh, duty trucks, um, um, but at the moment, uh, not so much uh, for passenger cars. We uh, have a large demand for hydrogen um, coming up in steel, in chemistry, in refinery. Um, and uh, this um, will soak up most of what we have available. I talk, talked about already the problems with renewables in uh, in building up new renewable capacity. Um, so this will not be really an option um, uh, for the um, uh, transport sector. Um, so uh, here we have to think about uh, electrification, uh, while for other sectors, um, uh, hydrogen might be as well a very important measure um, to push forward on the long run uh, or on the short run, because uh, of course we are not only interested in efficiency, but we are uh, interested in a systemic perspective, and in the systemic efficiency perspective, um, there, there will not be uh, it will not be useful to electrify everything, um, but to find a good mix um, of um, electric, uh, electrification measures um, and um, as well the use of hydrogen and e-fuels as we are developing uh, this market. And there the same questions arise that I have already talked about. So we don't need only an infrastructure development uh, for charging uh, electric vehicles, but we need also infrastructure development uh, for hydrogen, for CO2 uh, that needs to accompany these economic measures
structures that help us to make the transformation. Um, so um, uh, it's clear that um, making the transport sector electric is um, a big part of the electrification and the achievement of climate neutrality. And I hope that I could convince you that there is um, a usable and um, uh, achievable uh, climate-related uh, uh, economic framework to actually do this and, and achieve our targets. Thanks a lot. All right, Dr. Andreas Luschel, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us.